This nondescript building in the heart of Tokyo is the headquarters of Chongryon, or the General Association of Korean Residents in Japan. In the absence of diplomatic ties between Tokyo and Pyongyang, it acts as the de facto North Korean embassy in Japan, and it's the target of regular protests by Japanese nationalists. From espionage to the abduction of Japanese citizens, the activists accused Chongryon of helping North Korea commit crimes on Japanese territory. For decades, Chongryon actively supported the regime in Pyongyang, peddling propaganda that painted a positive picture of the country and prompted tens of thousands of Japan-born North Koreans to go and live in their spiritual homeland. Eiko Kawasaki's parents arrived in Japan before the outbreak of the Second World War. By the time she was 17, Kawasaki dreamed of going to North Korea, her ancestral home. Chongryon offered her a scholarship as long as she agreed to live in North Korea. She spent 43 unhappy years in the country before managing to escape. Read our demands, please. Thank you. I hope that the North Korean regime will be overthrown as soon as possible. I still have four children living there and will do everything possible to see them again. Last summer, Kawasaki and four other people who returned to Japan from North Korea filed a suit against the regime in Pyongyang. With help from Japanese lawyers, they're demanding 4 million euros in damages for the suffering they experienced in North Korea. When our ship arrived in North Korea, along with all of the other adults around me, we started to say to each other that we had been tricked into going there. Thousands of people turned out to welcome us. They were waving flowers and singing songs. But their faces looked thin and dark. People in North Korea don't have freedom. They have no rights, and human life has no value. The life of a North Korean is like that of a fly. Kawasaki is among a few people who have escaped among the estimated 93,000 Japan-born Koreans who went to live in the North. Uh, those people who were migrated to North Korea from Japan based on false information should be able to come back to Japan. But Kawasaki's anger towards the North Korean dictatorship is not shared by all Koreans in Japan. The city of Osaka is home to the largest ethnic Korean community in Japan. Many of them are the descendants of people who were brought to Japan at the start of the 20th century when the Korean peninsula was under Japanese colonial rule. They were put to work in coal mines in factories to help Japan's war effort. The establishment of North and South Korea also divided the expatriate Korean community in Japan. Some swore loyalty to the Kim dynasty in the north, setting up their own banks, universities and schools with support from the regime in Pyongyang. Some, like Heng Chang, a performance artist, remain loyal to the regime to this day. I was invited to North Korea to perform in a show to mark the centenary of the birth of North Korea's founder Kim Il-sung. I was very moved. It was as though my DNA was telling me that I was back home. It's true that nowadays a lot of things need to change in North Korea, but the country's ideal to ensure that everyone is equal is magnificent. North Korean leaders have always supported Korean unification. The dream that the two Koreas will eventually become one is shared by ethnic Koreans in Japan. Those living in Osaka have held the One Korea Festival every year for more than three decades. Once supported for many years by the North Korean regime, the festival now celebrates both Koreas. These days it's not unusual to see pop groups and other artists from South Korea perform alongside their North Korean counterparts. We all consider ourselves Korean, even though we live in different countries. We have the same blood. Life hasn't always been easy for the Korean diaspora, torn apart by the politics of the Korean peninsula, 
with the capitalist wealthy south on one side and the communist impoverished north on the other. But today, these people attending the festival are looking forward to closer ties between the two Koreas and between Pyongyang and Washington. North Koreans don't really understand South Koreans, and vice versa. But because we're from Japan, we understand people from both countries. We would like to be a bridge between all three countries. After years of taking a hard line, Japan's government has altered its stance towards North Korea. There's even talk of a possible meeting between Kim and the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, and perhaps a new future role in Japanese society for ethnic Koreans.